Now, the Quran, the Quran calls and he, you know, the first word from the Quran is what? Ikra. <coughs> that shows that the knowledge is one of the most important things in the religion. The Prophet, والسلام, you know, he always was teaching the people. And Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ عُلَمَا Really, the people who fear Allah, or the only people who fear Allah are those who have knowledge. So we have to get knowledge. And I give you one advice. One really good advice, and I saw it works. Please, a lot of you don't speak Arabic. But it doesn't matter. Take a good translation of the Quran in your language. You know, it's not, it's not everything. It's the meaning of the Quran. But take this and read it from the beginning to the end. Read it from the beginning to the end. Even Bilal Phillips, you probably know him, he said uh, before often here, he said that a lot of people just from reading the Quran became Muslims. And I saw the same thing with my own eyes. If you read the Quran, even in your, in your own language, believe me, he has such a power, the meanings of the Quran, it will improve your love for Allah. But because there is no book on earth, where the Almighty Lord is described like He's described in the Quran. So, try this. And to what will lead this? This will lead that you become better. That you will become stronger in your love for Allah. And we, we know the people who were strong in their love for Allah. Like the Salaf, the first three generations of Islam. These people had so much love for Allah, that even the lions were afraid of them. There are karamat, miracles, that the lion, a lion shows them the way. But today, unfortunately, we have the impression that, uh, that even the mice are now uh, not afraid of us, but we are afraid of mice. We have this, this impression. Sa'id ibn Jubair, one of the great mufassirun of the Tabi'un, the second generation, a student of, of Ibn Abbas, he was ordered from the ruler at this time, a tyrant, to give a special fatwa against Islam. And this ruler was famous, or what famous, you know, he will kill the scholar if he does not say what he wants him to say. He will kill him. I mean, no, he will, he will, he will kill him like a sheep. He will chop his head off. Imagine, you know, this guy, if you don't do what he say, he will chop your head off. It's a, it's, it's scary, isn't it? You know what, even, what Sa'id ibn Jubair said to him? Look this attitude because he know his Lord. He knew his Lord. What did he say? He said, If I would believe that you give life and death, I would worship you. This is what he said to him, subhanAllah. This is the attitude you get when you improve your strength, your your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the knowledge. So I give you the advice, read this Quran, and also in this center, there are a lot of lessons, a lot of durus that you can, that uh, you can uh, also come to this durus in this center and take part in it, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما دي بوازة سن الإسلام we have to fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we mentioned the first thing to improve to strengthen our love for Allah is to to know Him to learn about Him to learn about His attributes the second thing is that we think about the ni'mah, about the favors that Allah gave us in this life. And you see, all of us, alhamdulillah, we have eyes. If I would give you hundred dollars, you will say, thank you. You know, Allah gave you your eyes. Allah gave you your house. Allah gave you your wife, your kids, everything, your children. And you have to be thankful for it. When you think that Allah gave it to you, you will love Him. If you will have, uh, if you would work in a company, 
and you, you work there, and your, your, your boss, he gives you a lot of favors, you will love him, you say he's a good guy. You know Allah gave you everything. Everything. And there is a wisdom that there is, for example, sickness, illness. Why? Because would you realize, recognize the health if there was no sickness? And now you say maybe yes, okay, you say you're talking now about people who can see. But what about me? I'm blind. I tell to you, you have also to be thankful. Because the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Really, the greatest reward is with the hardest test. And Allah, when He loves people, He will give them a hard test. So, the Islam has an answer for everything. Alhamdulillah. Then, these are these favors in, the, in this life, from the this life perspective. But we have also the Akhira perspective in this life. If we think about the favors of Iman, because this is, without the slightest shadow of a doubt, the greatest niyama. Allah says in the Quran, lakum dinakum. Today I have perfected for you your religion. Alaikum ni'mati and completed my favors upon you. Why? Because he completed the religion of Islam. So the biggest ni'mah for a Muslim is that you, he made you a Muslim. Look how many people are today on the way to destruction in the hereafter. But that Allah gave you the iman. And look, one time I was with a friend, subhanAllah, we were talking in, in Mecca. We said, imagine there was no Islam. How boring life was, subhanAllah. You know the Islam, he gives you power. He gives you order in your life. He gives you, stre he gives you strength, everything. Islam gives you everything, hope for the hereafter. Imagine you will, I know it, I was a non-Muslim. Imagine you don't know what happens in the hereafter. Somebody in your family dies, you have no idea what happens. Like a lot of atheists, for example. He has, he has no idea. Imagine this feeling. Oh, it's away. he's away now. Now the Islam gives you hope. The Islam gives you direction or order. And when you know who gave you this, Allah gave you this Islam. So when you think about this, and we have always tried to think about this every day. The people who get, don't get a place here, they can go downstairs. There's also a place to pray. And there is a, yes.